One of the most, if not the most challenging parts of government contracting is building the right relationships with your vendors. You need competitive pricing, you need fast response times, and you need clear communication. But here's the catch. How are you supposed to build the right type of relationships if you're spending so much time on the RFQs determining which ones you want to bid on and which ones you want to skip? So in today's video, we're going to give you a tool that we created called GovScraper that allows you to minimize the amount of research time on each RFQ to maximize the amount of time that you're picking up the phone, calling those vendors to build the right relationship. So let's dive right into it. Hello, everyone. My name is Tristan Thomas with Mend Sourcing. And in today's video, we're going to go over that tool GovScraper, one that minimizes the amount of research time it takes on each RFQ to free up that time so you can now build the right relationships with your vendors. As you all know, the more competitive you have of a price, the more likely you are to win an award. So if you're spending more time building those relationships, you're more inclined to win more awards down the road. So what we thought we would do is give you a tutorial of how GovScraper works, how we use it, and how it can better assist you moving forward to become more efficient. So let's dive right in. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to show you exactly how GovScraper works. This right here is the main homepage of GovScraper. And as you can see, what we're trying to do here is simplify the RFQ and bidding process. As you all know, as you go through the DLA and you download all of those RFQs, you're spending so much time on each one of those RFQs. On average for us, it took us about seven and a half or eight minutes per RFQ just to get all of the information. We would take that information and put it on an Excel spreadsheet. For each RFQ that we were working on, roughly, like I mentioned, about seven and a half, eight minutes. But with all of that time, if we're doing about 20 a day, we're talking about, what, almost three hours of just pure research. That's not even taking into account the no bids that we would generally get down the road. So we were hitting our head against the wall. How could we make this more efficient? So this is why we created GovScraper. And really what we're doing here is we're really trying to ditch the PDF or that RFQ forever. Having one set area that you can actually get all the information that you need and actually input the information from those vendors when you get pricing back. The way that the whole process works is you would select your FSCs, select the categories in which you're wanting to focus on. So what set aside, small business, SDVOSB, unilateral, whatever it might be. And then those daily opportunities will be delivered to you in your dashboard. Let's dive into exactly how that works. The first thing that you would wanna do in the grand scheme of things is you would go to the login screen. And I'm just gonna log in real quick with our demo. And here is the dashboard of what you would have based upon your FSCs and your cage codes that you would have selected. As you see right here, it's going to show you the total amount of opportunities that have been new as of today. So here we're showing eight. Over the last 30 days, we're having 236 opportunities that were there, and there's five that expire as of today. From this home screen, I'm getting a quick snapshot of how many opportunities I currently have for today and how many I have over the last month. If I click on either go now or list of contracts, what it's going to do is give me an entire list of all all of those contracts. It's going to pull up all of the contracts filtered based upon descending order. So the newest ones are up front. The contract status will always default as a new opportunity. And we'll dive into why that matters down the road. But as I look down, I can click on any one of these contracts and it's going to give me all of the information in a quick snapshot. So instead of me going into dibs, downloading the PDF, and then manually pulling out all of the pieces piece by piece, which on average for us took about seven and a half, eight minutes, I get all of the information on the contract within 30 seconds. Contract Contract number, PR number, NSN number, the part number, as you see right here, uh, the due date, FOB shipping. So who's paying for it? Is it the government or is it me? An anticipated award amount. We'll talk a little bit about why that's so cool down the road. Who the manufacturers are, who are the proved manufacturers. If I scroll further down, I see a procurement history. So here's a list of all of the companies that have won this award previously, the price, the quantity, as well as the date. And then at the very bottom, it will show me the information about what the government is needing. So here's the contract line item number. So in this RFQ, they're needing 73 pieces in 888 days, and they're needing it to be packed at mill standard 2073. So like I mentioned, instead of me spending all of the time going into the dibs website, putting in the FSC codes that I'm wanting, filtering for issue dates, downloading a bunch, going back, getting that error, um, having a entire download folder full of RFQs, I just log into the system and in with 30 seconds, I can make a decision. Do I want to bid on this one or do I not want to bid on it? So it's a great tool that you can use just for that reason. Now, we have added a few new features into GovScraper, which is why we call this GovScraper 2.0. All of this feedback that we have been given from our members, we've now determined that, yes, this could be beneficial to others. So we've added it to the system. But a few cool things that we've added. Number one is this contract status area up at the top right here. So every RFQ in the system will start off default as a new opportunity. But as I look at this, I determine, do I want to bid on it or do I not want to bid on this? So I would click on edit. Then I would change the status of where we are in this contract. 
contract. So from new opportunity, I would decide, will I source it or will I no source it? In this case, let's just say theoretically, I want to source it. So I would click on will source and press save. Once you do that, if I go back, as you can see right here, the contract state is changed from new opportunity to will source. So as you progress through the RFQ from new opportunity to currently sourcing, to pricing in the bid, to bid completed, you can follow the progression inside of this system. Another cool thing that we have here is the manufacturer reference table. I love this tool that we have here, which allows us, instead of using a few different Excel spreadsheets, we can now take the quotes from our vendors and put it inside directly into the RFQ itself. So let's just say I go to company ABC Corp. So let's just type in ABC Corp. So I'll type in ABC Corp. The part number here is 66-4002-503. Quantity here, let's just say theoretically is a thousand pieces. When I send out the quote, obviously I don't have a price or a lead time, so I would save it here. What this allows me to know is that I sent out this quote to ABC Corp. Once ABC Corp comes back to me with the price, I then click on the edit button and I would change this to say, let's just say, what is that going to be? Uh, $275.75. And the lead time is 24 weeks. Great. I put all that information in there and then I would save it. So now as I get different quotes from different vendors, I can always go back to that RFQ and I can see exactly who have I sent it to and who has given me back pricing. Another cool feature about this manufacturer reference table is you can always add more rows as you progress through it. And also what you can do is you can upload files into it. So if you're looking to get a trace from your manufacturer, whomever that might be, and they give it to you in a PDF, or maybe you're taking a screenshot of the email, you can upload it into the system. And then by doing that, what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to upload it. So then you can reference it later down the road. So when the contracting officer comes back to you and says, Hey, can you send me traceability? You don't have to go sifting through your emails. You can just jump into GovScraper, find the, the solicitation and then upload or excuse me, download that uh, PDF that you put into the system. Another cool feature we have is this open PDF button right here. Now, one thing that I absolutely hated is each and every week I would delete all of the RFQs in my download folder. I'd have 100, 200 in there every single week. So many PDFs and I'm sure you have so many yourself too. So instead of you downloading that, the system already has the attacked PDF. So instead of downloading it, you just click on open PDF and it opens up a new tab and the PDF is right there. So no more downloading a bunch of different solicitations that you'll never use down the road. You can go back and right there, you'll have the contract again. And another feature that we do have here is this ID number. Now, one problem that we always had is we would send out a quote to a vendor with the part number inside of it, and then they would respond back to that email with a price. But I would never know exactly that part number what contract number does that attach to? I can't put the contract number in the email because then they know it's a government contract and we don't want to muddy up the water. So instead of that, we've created this ID number. So whenever I send out an email in the subject line, I will put this as the subject. So I will put T17 Echo 9 Echo Delta Hotel and then RFQ or flip that around. And then I would ask. So when the vendor gives me back a quote because they're responding to the same thread of emails, I take that ID number. So I copy that. And then all I do is I log into GovScraper. I put it in the ID search area. So I paste it in there, press enter, and only that contract will come up as you can see right there, right? So now I can put in whatever that cost was from the manufacturer that they put into the system. And another feature that we do have here is what's called the anticipated award amount. The last thing you want to do is spend so much time on a contract where there's an estimated value of $10 or 15 Yes, that might be good to get credibility with the DLA, but over time, you're never going to make the amount of money that you're looking for. You have to have a minimum amount of award amount that you're looking for when you're bidding on these contracts. So what we've created is what we call the anticipated award amount. Each RFQ will automatically determine what we believe the award amount would be. Now, this is a rough estimate, and it's not necessarily telling you what we ask you to bid the award on, not giving you any information like that but it allows you to kind of figure out exactly what is the area that I want to focus on. Like this contract right here has a $75,000 anticipated award amount. So this is one that I would typically bid on depending on what my profit margin is. If you're only wanting to focus on contracts, let's just say theoretically above $25,000 or more. So I put 25,000, right? I just put 25,000 in the minimum section up here and then I press enter and it's going to list all of the contracts above 25,000. Heck, I can do 250,000. Let's do that. And I only want to focus on that. Great. I have a list here. Not or forget that. I will maybe want to just focus on 500,000 or more. Great. You can do that as well too. This one I can bid on as well too. The reason why we have this anticipated award amount on each one of the RFQs is because we want to make sure that you're spending time on contracts that actually matter and that can help you win more profit. So based upon whatever you want to focus on, you have that anticipated award amount min and max. So with all of that, the way that the system works is each and every day, our scraper goes into the DLA website and downloads all of the PDFs based upon the criteria that you have set, whether it's the FSCs, set-asides, or a mixture of the both. 
and then downloads and pulls all the information and puts it into your dashboard. So what's the best way to use GovScraper? What are the best practices? Well, let's go over to exactly how our team uses it day in and day out which is helping us win many more awards. The first thing that we do is we log into the GovScraper website and we go over to the filter section and we go to where it says contract status and we click on new opportunity. What the system is going to do now is only show the contracts that have a new opportunity. If you're keeping track as you go along each day, they default to new opportunities. So you have a list of just today's. And then what our team does is they go through each one of them and determine, are we going to bid on this one or are we not going to? And then change the contract status. So our team looks at it like this and says, you know what, based upon this item, I think we're gonna bid on this. So we click on edit, change the contract status from new opportunity to will source and save. As you see right here, it changed from new opportunity to will source, go down to the next one, look at this one. Let's just say that this is going to be a no source, no bid, press save, go to the next one and do exactly the same until we clear out all of the new opportunities. Once we've cleared out all of the new opportunities and there's no more new opportunities, we would get rid of the new opportunity and we move on to will source. So now the system is just gonna pull up the contracts that are will source. And then this is where we're going to then click on it, take the part number. So the part number right here is SS5242-4, copy that, and I'm gonna start sending it out to my manufacturers, whomever they might be for the amount of quantity that's needed. So I send it out, that contract number, and don't forget to put the ID number in the subject line. And then for each email that I send out or any contact I make to a vendor, I'm gonna write the name of that company in the system. So ABC Corp, part number, let's just say one, two, three for a thousand pieces. And then I'm going to save. This allows me to know that I have now sent it out to ABC ABC Corp. So I can follow up down the road. Let's just say I send it to XYZ Corp. All right. One, two, two, three, a thousand pieces again, or 10,000 pieces. And then I press save again. Always remember to press save. And then I've now I'm going to now change the contract status from will source to currently sourcing. And we would continue to do that till all of the will sources are gone into a status of currently sourcing. Once that's done, as you see how we're going through this, right? I'm now looking at all my currently sourcing, seeing exactly where we are with that. Maybe there's follow-ups I need to do because it's under the, uh, the status of currently sourcing. This means that maybe I need to follow up because sometimes we send out emails and we forget who we sent it to. So now I can reach out to these companies saying, hey, last week I sent you that quote. Do you have a quote still? Or it's been two days. Do you have an update on this, right? But I'm trying to build that relationship by staying consistent with contacting them. But also I'm making sure nothing slips through the cracks. Once that company comes back and gives me a quote, what I'm going to do then is press the edit button and I'm going to write down what their price is. So let's just say that their price is $8.75 and it's going to be 12 weeks, right? So at this point now, I have a decision to make. Do I want to bid on it with ABC or do I want to follow up and or wait for XYZ Corp? Let's just say that the XYZ Corp email seems to have fallen on deaf ears. Nothing has happened or whatnot, and I'm ready to bid. So then I'm going to change it from currently sourcing now to pricing in and ready to bid. So now what I'm doing here is I'm getting rid of as many of those currently sourcing as much as I possibly can. And then the last thing that our team does before the end of the day is we want to put in all of our bids. So we change the contract status search from currently sourcing to pricing ready to bid. And as you see here, there's one more that I got to do. I put in the bid on the dibs website, the only time that I need to use the dibs website. And uh, after I put in my bid, I change this from pricing ready to bid to bid completed. And now it's completely done. So now that this area, there's no more contracts. I'm ready to call it a day. So this is the way that GovScraper works. It's a tool that our team uses on a daily basis and the members that we have, and we're at 18, uh, we launched in January, use this on a daily basis. Year to date for us, we've won over $2 million worth of awards. And I like to say that GovScraper has helped us become more efficient because we're building the right type of relationships with the vendors where we didn't have that time previously, where we were spending so much time in the research phase that we didn't spend time on the area that matters most, which is building the relationships with your vendors. So where do we go from here? If you see the value of how GovScraper can minimize the research time that you would take on these RFQs to free up that time to build the right type of relationships with your vendors, I highly recommend that you try a seven day free trial. In the way that you do it is you would go to www.govscraper, so govscraper.com. It's gonna bring you to this page right here and you would click on try free for seven days. What it's going to do is bring you to a screen where is the six steps to get the right type of information. So we know what criteria we need to start pulling the RFQs from. So if you click on start now, it's going to ask you what FSC do you wanna focus on? So let's you just say you wanna focus on 40, I don't know, firefighting equipment. Do you wanna focus on uh, scaffolding equipment and so on? Whatever FSCs you wanna choose, you wanna put them in here and click on next step. 
The next thing is you want to determine what categories you want to pull from. So what set aside? So highly encourage that if you're a small business, you 100% click on small business set aside. But if you have other set aside, such as a hub zone or service disabled veteran on small business or women on small business, whatever it might be, 100% click on those areas. Or if you're someone that just wants to do all of the, the, the um, RFQs under that FSE, click on all of the above. And then you would go to next step. From there, you're going to type in your email address and then you would progress through this. And at the very last step, they're going to ask you for your credit card information, but nothing is taken out for the first seven days. So you do get to try the whole system to see how it works before anything is pulled out. If this is a tool that you want to use, definitely feel free, sign up, try the seven day free trial. It's worked for so many people and it works for us. It's a tool we created and we actually use. And if you do sign up with that seven day free trial, I will be able to schedule the time with you where we jump on a Zoom call and I'll personally give you a demo to show you how GovScraper works with your own set RFQs. So hopefully you see the value that GovScraper can bring to you. It helps you minimize the amount of research time it takes on these RFQs to free up that time to build the right relationships with your vendors. I talk to so many people in this space that can't get the right relationships with the vendors. And the reason why is they're not trying to actually build the relationships. They're so busy on sending out quotes that they don't take the necessary time to try to establish a relationship. GovScraper is going to give you back that time to do just that. So if you see the value in GovScraper, highly recommend that you do sign up for the seven-day free trial, and I'll give you a demo of how the system works. And with that, I want to thank you for your time with this video. Again, my name is Tristan Thomas with Mend Sourcing, also GovScraper, and I hope to help you moving forward.